Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and in this video we're going to talk about 10 things that you may or may not know about Destiny. Now, I started this series with Destiny just a few weeks after the launch of the game, and over the years we've discussed the meaning of the Stranger, the significance of Pokemon Atheon attacks, and we've even covered the intricate connections of Destiny to Dark Souls. Some topics have been more interesting than others, but with 5 total entries into this series, one thing that has never changed is that we'll go over topics that are based in lore, game mechanics, and things that are just simply fun to know. But all these these topics are either obscure or widely unknown. Also, the topics will get more difficult as we go, so remember to hit the like button if you learn something new. Alright, let's get started. The first one is super easy and super useful, and it has to do with the artifact, the Memory of Gellion. This is a pretty cool artifact, essentially giving you an enhanced radar at all times, but what you may not know is the extent of that radar. For one, it marks chest locations. Additionally, it will mark planetary resource materials as well, but unlike a ghost that only marks one type of resource, the Memory of Gellion will work on every planet for all material types, making it the go-to item when you need to farm absolutely anything. Next, every social space has some type of hidden interactable object, like the fan in the tower, this light at the reef, this glowing ball, or this servitor. Well, one that you may have missed is actually in the Iron Temple. This is easily overlooked because the interactable button to switch the light on and off is not given priority over the bounty robot there. It's a stupid topic, I know, but still, it's something that a lot of people have probably missed. Now, you know what else is stupid? The next topic. It's so simple. You may have even seen it every time you've played Destiny and never really noticed it. It's as simple as this. What you may not know is that the stairs in the center of the tower are uneven. Yep, that's it. That's all there is to it. Alright, since that one was so subtle, let's take a look at the reef as well. One thing that you probably noticed was the reef has a strong light source which casts long shadows. Now what you may not have noticed is that sometimes the shadows of the ships from the background will intersect. And in the process, they'll momentarily form the Taken King icon. For the next one, it would appear that Bungie has a romantic side, so much so that they even help two guardians with a marriage proposal. Yes, at the behest of Edriel Miss Minotaur Wallach, Bungie aided with her proposal to Rami Ishmael. It all started with an in-game message from the postmaster titled, A Letter from Edriel to Rami. After the heartfelt letter, Edriel used a special emote to drop to one knee and propose to Ishmael. There was even a unique artifact called the Ring of Eternity. Yes, it would seem from a ring to a special emote, Bungie and Adriel had thought of everything. Everything except for the fact that the ring has no light level! Now if Rami wants to take the ring off to do the raid, Adriel would be like, Where's the ring, Rami? Why aren't you wearing the ring, Rami? Don't you love me, Rami? You don't love me, Rami! Who are you sleeping with, Rami? Is it Eris? It's, is it Iacora? It's Ikora, isn't it? You bitch, you dirty bitch. You know, you know, stuff like that. So Bungie, if you're listening, for the sake of the marriage, add a light level to the ring, will ya? Alright, moving along. In a previous episode, we discussed the environmental evidence detailing the events of one of the ill-fated colony ships at the Cosmodrome. And, on that note, if you didn't know, well, all of these colony rockets lining the Russian countryside are actually ships filled with people. But, obviously, many of the ships never took off. In fact, the inside of the domes on each colony ship is filled with hundreds of stasis pods housing people. And one last thing that you may not know is that one stasis pod can actually be scanned during the stealth drive mission. Pod number 10201. A guardian with exceptional light sealed himself inside. He's been in there for centuries. Before I found you, I tried to resurrect him, but he preferred to sleep. He said the last war was enough for a thousand lifetimes. Some believe this war-exhausted sleeper in the pod is actually a nod to Master Chief of the Halo series, Bungie's previous game. Wake me when you need me. Now speaking of Bungie's earlier work, the next topic has to do with the Dragon's Breath rocket launcher in Destiny and its similarities to a weapon from Bungie's past. In Bungie's previous work with Halo, they once had a flamethrower called the M7057DP. Now the most obvious connection here between the two weapons is the fire attributes, but also the nearly identical paint job on each weapon. Also, the DP in the name of M7057DP actually stands for Defoliant Projector. 
In other words, it was meant to defoliate or to clear foliage away. It was not originally intended for combat, which is probably why Dragon's Breath sucks so bad. It's just a terrible exotic weapon. Now, what you may not know is that the defoliant projector was originally in the code of the console version of the first Halo, but was removed from the official game. It was not until the Halo PC that it was added to multiplayer, and it didn't officially appear until Halo 3 in a few campaign levels. So, who knows, maybe the Dragon's Breath is a hint to a flamethrower heavy weapon type in the future of Destiny. After years of playing Destiny, I can say without doubt that the Titan is my favorite class. When I first started Destiny, the Defender bubble was easily my favorite spec, but as of late, I have found myself playing the Defender less and less as the time span of the game goes on. Well, one thing that would be definitely awesome and that you may not know is that originally the Titan's bubble would travel with the character. That's right. In this pre-release footage, we can see that the Titan's Defender Super was a much smaller bubble that was not stationary. Instead, it was a mobile death fortress. Now, I don't know about you, but I think a mobile yet much smaller bubble would be a great trade-off, and it'd definitely make for a really cool exotic effect as well. For the next one, if you've ever wondered where Zerg goes when he's not peddling goods for strange coins, look no further than World of Warcraft. Yes, after the WoW expansion titled Legion, the city of Dalaran was moved, and along with the city moving came a new NPC by the name of Zerios. This new NPC is a clear nod to Zur of Destiny, as Zerios peddles goods that are changed over time. They cost curious coins instead of strange coins, and lastly, he stocks items like Ingrams and Galar's Horn, a rocket that deals 2 million fire damage. So, yeah, that sounds about right. The next topic has ties that start at the beginning of Destiny and work their way all the way to the very end, and that long living nod is to Randall the Vandal. The origin story for Randall the Vandal is pretty simple. There was once an extremely overpowered Vandal that had a chance to spawn in several locations, and the community went on to dub this superpowered Vandal with the name Randall. Well, after a patch, Randall disappeared for a long time. Well, Randall finally made a return in the Wrath of the Machine raid. It would seem that in a nod to the community, that an extremely rare spawn of a SIVA augmented Randall the Perfected can be found in the server farm room just before the final encounter of the Wrath of the Machine raid. Alright, now for number one. Honestly, this topic is one of my favorites I've ever looked into for Destiny. It's stupid, not completely accurate because many of the variables are not considered, but more than anything, it's interesting as hell to me. In fact, I came extremely close to making an entire video dedicated to this topic alone, but instead of spending 20 minutes breaking down every single possible variable, we're going to do the watered-down basic version of the idea. So, first things first, have you ever wondered how fast the spaceships in Destiny are traveling? Well, what you may not know is that they're traveling pretty damn fast. So fast, in fact, that they're breaking our current understanding of the laws of physics. Now, we can determine how fast a ship is traveling by how far it goes over a certain period of time. And, well, the average load time in Destiny is 40 to 50 seconds. And the farthest distance you can travel from Earth and Destiny is to the rings of Saturn on the Dreadnought. Now, to gauge just how fast your ship is traveling, let's take a look at the speed of light. Light travels at 186,287 miles per second. It takes 1 hour and 11 minutes, or 71 minutes, for light to travel from Earth to Saturn. So, if your ship can travel that same distance from Saturn to Earth in roughly 50 seconds, that would mean that at the very least your ship can travel 85 times faster than the speed of light. Or... 15.8 million miles per second. Now I know this is extremely general and not taking in many variables. There's all kinds of different ways you could look at this, but the next time you think the load times in Destiny are too long, just take into account that they're much faster than the 71 minutes it would take to travel from Saturn to Earth if the spaceships actually had to adhere to the laws of physics. Alright guys, thanks for watching the final episode of 10 Things You Don't Know About Destiny. Before you go though, I'd like you to do one thing. Take the challenge. Let me know how many of the 50 topics across the 5 videos you knew. And this video is the finish line, so leave your results in the comment section below. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series, and here's to another 50 bizarre topics when Destiny 2 finally rolls around. I'll see you in the next video.